Heather Antos' Twitter feed is a quarter copy of just stuff you can make videos about. Oh. Today we're going to talk about a couple things she had to say. This one is a doozy. This is to Gareth Edwards. She said, thank goodness I'm so much more successful than you'll ever be then. It almost makes you laugh when you hear Heather Antos talking about how she's been successful. She's a senior editor at IDW Comics. Not exactly like the highest paying gig in the world, Aaron. No, not really. Uh, you know, and I know that they... Uh they used to pay pretty well, but I know that in uh, in recent years, especially post pandemic, uh, the amount that they pay has uh, has decreased. But she's saying she's a success. But she, when she was at Valiant Comics, she got promoted to senior editor there, and the sales dropped literally across the line when she arrived. Not only that, after she's left, and it's only been um, you know maybe a year now, the publisher's literally going out of business. They're going to publish one comic a month into 2023 they're hoping. Yeah, it definitely seems like uh, the creative path that she set the company on as an editor has not uh, has not worked out for them. Uh, you know, I would say that chasing customers away, uh, you know, having titles that uh, whose sales plummeted on her watch, uh, I would say definitely are contributing to the woes that Valiant currently has. Well, and she went to IDW, not exactly a super stable company. They're trying to transition over to like creator owned stuff. She's supposedly working on the Star Trek line, but within months of her arriving, Marvel went out there and removed their Marvel, like, young kids comic books from IDW. They removed their Star Wars comic books from IDW. Could it happen to be that the Star Wars editor that they fired because she was incompetent, being hired by IDW to work on Star Wars comics initially, could that have something to do with it? I bet it does, Aaron. Yeah, they handed it back to Dark Horse, which, you know, honestly, uh, I wish the... Star Wars license had never left Dark Horse in any form, uh, be it going over to Marvel or going over to uh, IDW. So it, it just, the timing was definitely coincidental, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. C.B. Cebulski and, uh, and the people at Marvel weren't like, they just hired the person that was destroying our Star Wars comics books before to work on Star Wars comics again. How about we remove that? We did a little tester period with the, you know, the, the young comic books for uh, Marvel Comics heroes and stuff. Let's move them somewhere else. I bet... That had nothing to do with her. Also, since she's arrived, the Hasbro license, they've lost that. That's about to go to another company. Those are some of their biggest money makers that they've had traditionally for the last five or six years. And they've completely run them into the ground. Uh, you know, the Transformers, uh, you know, a lot of it they blame on uh, Revolution when they uh, put all those other titles together with it, like Mask, you know, things that you and I have talked about. Uh, you know, they think that that dragged Transformers down. You and I have talked about the fact that that's not what dragged it down. It was the politics that they were inserting into Transformers, which Transformers fans don't care about. Um, you know, of course, with G.I. Joe, you had the whole Aubrey Citizen situation. So that uh, upset the G.I. Joe fans. It, it's just one of those cases where you've got you've got people working for your company who are continually upsetting the fan bases of these things. And then sales are tanking. They're damaging the brand within comics. And when you hire someone like Heather, who, you know, for all I know in, in person might be a, a delightful person. I don't know. Uh, you know, I know that some people have said that she's easy to work with. You know, other people have said that she's not. I'm sure that can be said about any of us. But the fact of the matter is, she's very divisive when it comes to your customer base because she is always out there on Twitter insulting the customers, saying things that are intended to rile them up. You know, whenever she feels the need that she needs some kind of attention, she'll put something out there that is guaranteed to antagonize. And I just don't know that that's the direction that you want to go with your company. I think that you need people who are trying to bring people in and trying to deal with you know customer satisfaction and create customer service and i just don't think that she's the person to do it i think the evidence bears it out also being a senior editor she's supposed to be going out there and procuring talent and bringing them over to some of their licensed stuff over idw and i can tell you for a fact i've talked to multiple people that have worked with heather antos in the past and they laugh at her incompetence when it comes to comic book editing that's why you have jackson lansing and Colin Kelly on the Star Wars franchise now. That's why you're getting like all these books with um, with Daddy Lore and stuff. Now that Heather is there, because good comic book writers don't want to work with her. They know that she's an incompetent joke and that she can't edit comic books. We've already seen it at IDW. Yeah, there was the recent Star Trek debacle uh, where you had an episode, I believe it was, uh, or an issue of uh, Deep Space Nine that came out, and it was directly referencing stories that were told on the show. But obviously, the writer did not know or did not properly research and actually was contradicting things that happened in the show and it didn't get caught by editorial and that's that's her job her job is to know the property that you're working on you know if you're working on star trek 
even if it wasn't a property that you knew about, you need to immerse yourself in that. And hey, you don't have to watch everything from the beginning of the original series. But if you're doing a Deep Space Nine series, you might want to watch that show. And you might especially want to watch the episodes that are being referenced in the comic that you're doing so that you can catch these problems before they go to print. And you might also want to hire somebody that knows something about Star Trek and lore if they're going to be writing for, for that kind of franchise. But she doesn't do that kind of research. Recently, we got this other tweet out where she said, have you done the work to successfully produce a single comic book? Congratulations, you paid your dues the end. She doesn't know the most successful people in comic books. She literally thinks if you made a comic book that you're good to go to work at IDW. It doesn't matter what your history or knowledge about comic books is. As long as you've done one single comic book, that's paying dues now, Aaron. Senior Wait. editor. Yeah, because it's not the same as it used to be. It used to be you would start out on something small uh, and then you'd be given like a little bit of a bigger opportunity. You know, you do some one shots, you do some backup stories, you do a fill in issue for, you know, uh, you know what they used to call inventory issues. And that's how you paid your dues. You proved yourself. You got I'm like, I remember Mark Bagley. He was working on backups uh, in uh, Amazing Spider-Man annuals. Uh, he did some uh, some backup with a character named Poison that they've never really used again. Uh, and, you know, he wasn't ready for prime time at that time. When I was looking at his art, I was like, oh, I don't really like this guy. And, you know, but he cut his teeth. He paid his dues. And eventually he became great. And now you put Mark Bagley on a book and I'm inclined to go pick it up just based on his art. Uh, but that's what paying your dues is. It's honing your craft. It's not just putting out a thing and then expecting that you're going to get work. But you have to understand, this is the perspective that she has because that's how she got in. She was like, I want to get into comics. And Jordan White was like, oh, have you ever done anything? And she's like, no. And he's like, oh, you need to go like edit a book. So she went and she edited like something for an anthology that was nothing. And then next thing you know, she's working at Marvel because Jordan White wanted a work wife. <laughs> you know, that's the rumor. So she hasn't paid her dues in that sense. So of course she's going to have that perspective. She wasn't asked to do the minimum that it used to require to get into the industry. Well, and everywhere that she's gotten, she's failed spectacularly, yet she continues to keep getting work. So in her mind, she probably thinks she did pay her dues just by showing up, which, you know, at some point you actually have to sell a goddamn comic book. That has been a problem. I think another problem with Heather is, and she kind of opens herself up to this one, like she doesn't like comic books and she's admitted it. This is what she also said on social media. I'm here purely out of spite. That is not a good reason to be in comic books anymore. She's just here because she's spiteful to people that said that she did a bad job. That is a really sad statement. That kind of makes me sad inside. It's uh, because you're not, you're waking up every day and you're doing a job that you don't enjoy. You're just doing it to dunk on the chuds. You know, all the people that you don't like in the comic book industry or in the comic book fandom, uh, you know, you don't like the customers. So you're just getting up every day and you're doing a job because you want to stick it to them. That's not a good reason to do anything. Uh, spite is a horrible motivator. Uh, it motivates you for a little while, but it eats away at your soul. And I think that that might be what we're seeing. Like her, her Twitter account is such a Debbie Downer of an account. And it just seems like she's not happy. It seems like she's not happy in life. It seems like she's not happy in her job. And she's making everyone else miserable. <laughs> so I don't know that, uh, you know, I don't know that that's a viable career choice. And she's out there dunking on people, talking about what a big success she is. Like, we all saw that you had to go fund me for work equipment. Like, get out of here. You're not very successful. Like, you're, you're grinding it out, and maybe one day you will be successful. But realize there's a mountaintop, and you're at the very bottom. You haven't done any climbing because you haven't had a successful comic book series you've been involved with yet. There's a long ways to go before Heather Antos can consider herself a success anywhere in comic books. No, my advice would be tweet less, work more, you know, put in more work, uh, take classes, learn from people that you've that you've worked with other people in the industry, you know, try to try to stop acting like, you know, everything and just start listening more. Uh, you know, I, I think that that's like the most important thing that you can do in any endeavor is look at people that are successful at it and then learn from them and then implement that into your own work. And I think that that's the problem is that there seems to be like no self-awareness. She's talking about, you know, oh, I'm more successful than you'll ever be. What, what do you make? Like 60 grand a year? Like maybe, uh, maybe, you know, and, and who even knows at IDW anymore? Uh, so, you know, I don't know that that's an unqualified success. You haven't had your name on a, on a book that's like done really well or that you're, you're really known for. What you're known for is complaining and causing problems on Twitter. That's your legacy try to pour it into like making a book that people enjoy and that people remember you for that's that's what your effort should be
If you'd like some more proof that Heather Antos has not been a success, I actually did an in-depth video when she got promoted at Valiant Comics about a lot of the issues that happened. Everything Tank, I talked about it in depth. Lots of good information here. This is an old school video. The quality isn't quite as high as you're gonna see here today, but this is absolutely a great video. If you wanna hear about some of the issues Heather Antos had at Valiant Comics, if you're on mobile device, there's a link in the video description.